this is a quote from the, as we say, the most uh, famous uh, scientist in the world, Sir Isaac Newton. He wrote, I find more sure marks of authenticity in the Bible than in any profane history whatsoever. And this uh, quote is from the 16th century. And this was a common view at that time, but uh, this view has changed. So today the view on the Bible is quite opposite in, in the, some parts of the world, at least. And many views the Bible, it's content uh, with many myths. But since the 19th century until today, there have been done many discoveries that confirm many of the figures found in the Bible. And therefore we can say, time is the Bible's best friend. In part one of this series, we looked at um, persons or figures from Assyria, from Judah, from Syria and from Israel. And if you are interested in part one, you can uh, look at uh, or listen to it uh, at uh, our uh, YouTube channel or at our uh, museum website. But what are we going to look at in part two? We will uh, take a trip to Jerusalem, and then to Babylon, and then to Persia. So we will start with Jerusalem. What do we see here? We see seals or bulla. Uh, a seal it was, uh, is a piece of clay or other materials with an individual design stamped into it, attached to a document as a guarantee or of authenticity. The size, it's not so big. It's uh, approximately one centimeter in diameter. And in the 1980s and 1990s, archaeologists they discovered lots of uh, such seals in Jerusalem. And it was in the part of Jerusalem that it's called City of David. And this part of Jerusalem, there uh, lived person, very important person. They, uh, they worked close to the king. And among the seals, there are some names of figures that we also find in the Bible. And we will look at six person from these uh, different seals. And we will start with this seal. <clears throat> in the text, this says, belonging to, to Gemariah, son of Shafan. Who was Shafan? He says in uh, Second Kings, Elkiah, the high priest, said to Shafan, the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the law. He gave it to Shafan, who read it. So this was a, <clears throat> a historical moment in the Jewish history. The law of Moses was found in the temple. And we notice that uh, the law book was not brought to the king at first, but to Shafan. Why? Because uh, he was a secretary, and the secretary at that, ta at that time <clears throat> had a very trusted assignment. Among other, many other things, he was close advisor to the king. So thus was Shafan one of the most important men in the kingdom. So it's not so surprising that we find seals in, were discovered uh, with his, uh, his and his family's name at that place in, in Jerusalem. Encyclopedia Georgica says about this family, 
the family of Shafan dominated and held the position of king's scribe from the time of Yoshaya until the exile. Here we have, but there, there was another person also mentioned at the seals. It was uh, his son, Gemariah. In uh, Jeremiah chapter 36, we read about Gemariah. From the room of Gemariah, son of Shafan, the secretary, which was in the upper courtyard at the entrance of the new gate of the temple. Baruch read to all the people at the Lord's temple the words of Jeremiah from the scroll. We notice that he, Gemariah, he has his own room or, or, or uh, own office. And we are now at the time when Jeremiah was a prophet in Jerusalem. And when the king heard the word of Jeremiah, he became incredibly angry. He commanded that the scroll to be burned. And the Bible says, even though Gemariah urged the king not to burn the scroll, he would not listen to them. Instead, the king commanded to arrest Baruch, the scribe, and Jeremiah, the prophet. So, he, Gemariah, he must be a very brave man and a great support to uh, Jeremiah. And then we have two other names, Gedaliah, son of Pasher. And uh, this seal was, uh, was found in 2005. We do not know much about Pasher. But he is mentioned in the Bible in Jeremiah 38. Gedaliah, son of Pasher, heard what Jeremiah was telling all the people. But we know, know more about Gedaliah. But it's not so positive when, they, when we read uh, about him. We read about Gemariah how he supported the prophet uh, Jeremiah. But uh, Gedaliah, he did the opposite. He and two other officials said, this man, uh, Jeremiah, should be put to death. So it was not so positive. And then we have two other persons mentioned, Yehukal, son of Shelemiah. And here is the same, the Shelemiah, we do not know so much about him. Uh, it says, uh, but his name is in the Bible, King Zedekiah, however, sent Jehukal, son of Shelemiah, to Jeremiah. But Jehukal, we know something about him. He was also a very important official, like Gedaliah, as we learn. Uh, Previously, they together tried to put Jeremiah to death. The Bible says in Jeremiah 38, 6, so they took Jeremiah and put him into the system. So, and what about the end of the story? It's very ex exciting. You can read about it in uh, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 38. So, so far, we have confirmed six persons, Shafan, Gemariah, Pasher, Gedaliah, Shelemiah, and Yehuka. And we are now in a very turbulent time for the Jerusalem, and it's because the Babylonian Empire. They had now become the world power after the Assyrians. And one very famous ba Babylonian king was Nebuchadnezzar. The word book uh, encyclopedia uh, said following, 
Babylon became one of the most magnificent cities of the ancient world. In his own records, he, Nebuchadnezzar, rarely mentioned his military activities, but wrote of his building projects and his attention to the gods of Babylonia. And here is one of his own, how he relate, it's a clay cylinder. And it says, Nebuchadnezzar, dresser, king of Babylon, the wall of Babylon that which no former king had done, I did at the enclosure of Babylon, I made an enclosure of a strong wall on the east side. I then saw that the wall which my father had prepared was too small in its construction. I built with bitumen and brick a mighty wall which, like a mountain, could not be moved. And we, if we compare this with the Bible, it says in Daniel chapter 4, as the king, Nebuchadnezzar, was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, he said, is not this the great Babylon I have built as the royal resident by my mighty power for the glory of my majesty? So he's, he was a builder, not we no doubt about that, but he is not so uh, famous for his building projects in the Bible. It's more about the, this from the second Kings, he says. At that time, the officer of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, advanced on Jerusalem and laid siege to it. Nebuchadnezzar removed all the treasure from the temple of the Lord and from the royal palace. He took Jehoiakim captive to Babylon. He made Mataniah, Jehoiakim's uncle, king in his place and changed his name to Zedekiah. Let us sum up this. It mentioned King Nebuchadnezzar, he sieged Jerusalem, removed all the treasures, he took captives and installed a new king in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, yes. And here is the story from, from the Babylonians. It says, the king of Akkad, Nebuchadnezzar, Akkad is another word for Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar mustered his troops and encamped against the city of Judah and seized that city and captured the king. He appointed their king of his own choice, received its, its heavy tribute and sent them to Babylon. So let us compare. It's mentioned both the Bible and the clay tablet from Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar seized Jerusalem, removed treasures, captured the king of Jerusalem, of the Jerusalem and he installed a new king. This is a, um, excuse me, what is this? Yeah, this is in the basement, in the um, uh, cellars in the museum around the world, there is hundreds of thousands of clay tablets. And many of them, of course, is not translated yet. But in the year 2007, they uh, took this uh, clay tablet and translated it. It uh, was from uh, Baghdad. It was found in 1870s. And when they translated it, they uh, it says one point minas of gold, the property of Nabu Sharushi Ukin the chief eunuch of Munich, which he sent. And this person, Nabu Sharusi Ukin, it's in the Bible and it's translated to the Hebrew. 
and you find the name in Jeremiah uh, chapter 39. Then all the official of the king of Babylon came and took seats in the middle gate. Neighbor said, Sikim, the chief officer, and all the other officials of the king of Babylon. And on the British Museum's website, we can read, I quote, the chief unit, unit was one of the commanders of the Babylonian army and among the highest officials at the Babylonian court. As we know from con um, contemporary cuneiform text, importantly, there was always only one man with this title at any given time. Nabu, Sharusu, Ukim, and Nebu, Sarsakim are clearly one and the same person. So here we have confirmed man, uh, the chief officer, Nebu, Sarsakim. We read earlier that Nebuchadnezzar captured the king of Judah, and his, his name was Jehoiakim. And the king who succeeded um, Nebuchadnezzar, yeah, it was uh, Evil Merodach. And the Bible says about Evil Merodach. Uh, in the year Evil Merodach became king of Babylon, he released Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and feed him from prison. And for the rest of his life, ate regularly at the king's table. And the, they found a small clay tablet in the Ishra gate in, in uh, Babylon. And it says, this is from Pergamon Museum, you can on display there. And it's not so big. It's, uh, I think it's one diameter, I think the length of it. But it shows that uh, the evil Merdak, he gave, uh, he says, 10 seal of oil to the king of Judah, Jehoiakim, and the rest of the family. So it confirmed, as we're uh, uh, king of uh, evil Merdak, freed him and for the rest of his life ate regularly at the king's table. So this uh, clay tablet, it confirmed uh, their evil Merodak, he wrote it, and uh, Jehoiakim, and the detail that uh, they ate. They got food from uh, the Babylonian king. The yeah, but the Israelites was now in uh, captivity, prisoner in Bab Babylonia. And um, yeah, and here they were exiled for 70 years, it says in the Bible. And in the end of these 70 years, a man by the a man by the name Belsassar was now king in Babylon. And this is a painting uh, by uh, John Martin. And he, it describes what it says in Daniel 5 1. And it says that King Belsassar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with, with them. And up until year 1854, the only reference to this king, Belsasser, was found in the Bible. And because of that, many scholars they said, hmm, Belsasser is just a fantasy figure. But in 1854, this small uh, clay cylinder was found. And it says, as for me, Nabonese, king of Babylon, save me from singing against your great Godhead and grant me as a present lifelong of days. 
and as for Belsasar, the eldest son. So in, in other words, this king was definitely not the product of a fantasy, but a real person in Babylon. So the Bible gets it right. When he has his banquet, the feast, something dramatic happened. The Bible tells us that the very night Belsasar, king of the Babylonians, was slain. So he was killed. But this was not all that happened that night. Uh, a clay tablet tells us Cyrus from Media Persia uh, entered Babylon without a battle. And several of historians uh, have uh, confirmed that the, this happened and the Bible tells us also about it. And uh, one historian, Herodotus, he lived in the fifth uh, century BCE. He says following, there was a festival going on, just as the Bible said, so Belsasar had his banquet. And even while the city, Babylon, was falling, the Babylonians continued to dance and enjoy themselves until hard facts brought them to death. So, let us sum up the persons we have uh, looked at in uh, Babylon. We have Nebuchadnezzar, Nebu Sarsekim, uh, Jehoiakim, he was not from Babylon, he was from Judea, Jerusalem, but he lived in, in Babylon. And then we have Evil Merodach, and we have Belsasar. The next word power which entered the scene was the Persian Empire. After Cyrus had conquered Babylonia, he did something that many seem strange. Because the Bible says, this is what Cyrus, king of Persia says, the Lord, the God of heaven, has appointed me to build a temple for him and Jerusalem in Judah. Any one of his people among you, may the Lord his God be with him and let him go up. Could this be true? A king released his uh, prisoner and helped them to build their temple. Many pe people said no, but in in the end of the 1870s, archaeologists found this clay tablet. And it's on display in the British Museum. And it tells us that he released uh, his um, prisoners. And it says also that he helped them to build their temple. This is uh, not about the Israelites, but it shows that Cyrus, he, he released prisoners and helped them to build the place for worship. Then these rights, they went uh, back to Jerusalem and started to rebuild, uh, up, uh, rebuild Jerusalem, which had been desolated for 70 years. But this was not so popular among the Persians. And uh, as it says in uh, in Ezra, the enemies of Judah hired counselors to work against them and frustrate their plans during the entire reign of Cyrus, king of Persia, and down to the reign of Darius, is the first king of Persia. So here we have a new king, Darius the first. And this is a um, really masterpiece. It's a Behustun inscription. It's uh, inscription is carved 100 meters or 330 feet up uh, a cliff in Iran. 
and it's uh, done by uh, Darius the Great or Darius the First, or so the name that is called, and it's measured 25 meters long, 82 feet, and uh, 15 meters high, or 49 feet. And because uh, after they had um, uh, finished the uh, carving, they uh, removed the scaffold. And because of that, it has been preserved to our days. And if we zoom it in, we can get it. And we see to the left that uh, Darius, he um, yeah, trampled on uh, arrival and then we have uh, nine i think one two three four five nine rebels and they if you take a look you see the there's a roof uh, with a neck and he was the, i think it the most uh, mighty persian king We read earlier that enemies of the Jews tried to stop the Jews from rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem. They also accused the Israelites of rebelling against Persia. And uh, Jerusalem was situated in an area that uh, the Persian called across the river, that is to the west of Euphrates. And to deal with the uh, this problem with the uh, Israelites, a Persian official led an inquiry into the matter. And his name was Tatanai. And the Bible says, at that time, Tatanai, governor of Trans Euphrates, Euphrates uh, went to them, Israelites, and asked, Who authorized you to rebuild this temple and restore this structure? And a clay tablet was found. And this is from a family archive. And his name, Tatanu, governor across the river. So this clay tablet, it confirmed both the name and the title. So it was a detail here, governor across the river. Now the time passed by and there no, now we're coming to a new king in um, Persia. And his name is Xerxes the first. And he has his uh, place or uh, palace in uh, Susa. At that time, King Xerxes reigned from his royal throne in the citadel of Susa. And he met a very famous woman from the Bible. It says in Esther chapter 2, verse 16, she, Esther, was taken to King Xerxes in his royal residence. And here is, uh, they have found a ruin uh, of his uh, palace, and this is what. Uh, uh, artist imagined it. But we should um, up in the columns, you see, uh, I don't find the pen. Okay. If you see the columns, it's not so easy to see it at the slide here on the screen, but up the columns, there are figures but it's easier to see in the next, because the, there were French archaeologists that uh, discovered the palace, and they brought um, an artifact to the Louvre Museum in Paris. And here you can see the top of the, the figures, the top of the columns uh, to the right. And then to the left, you see a very nice, uh, beautiful uh, bricks. So they found this in Susta. And if you compare these bricks with the uh, bricks in Ishtagate in Babylon, 
it looks the same. It, it, it's, it's not so surprising because Darius, who built this uh, palace, he says, those who worked the baked brick with figures were Babylonians. So they have the skill and therefore they're it's very similar to, to each other. And in this palace in Susa, Esther, she lived. The girl Esther pleased Xerxes and won his favor. Immediately, he provided her with her beauty treatments. And if you take a look at the, the picture, you see at the bottom, some jars, and these uh, jars are meant to to contain uh, oil to beauty treatment. So maybe we don't know. It could be that that jars is uh, from it's esters. We don't know, of course, but they used them, so it. In a way, it confirmed also the Bible. Let us now move further in time. Now a man, a Jewish man with name Nehemiah, is, he is now living in Susa. And he received bad news from Jerusalem. He says, those who survived exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. So the Israelites had rebuilt the temple, but the walls were still broken down. And Nehemiah, he worked for the king Artaxerxes as a cupbearer. He says in the month of night, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when the wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. And what is a cupbearer? It was an official of the royal court who served wine or other drinks to the king. And sometimes it included testing wine by tasting it before giving it to the king. And why? It was because uh, the possibility always existed and attempt might be made on the king's life by poisoning his wine, as a dictionary says. And this uh, silver bowl is on display in British Museum. And here it's uh, Engraved some uh, names. We have uh, Artaxerxes and there's also Xerxes and Darius the first. So here we have the, all three, the family, Darius, Xerxes and Artaxerxes. It says uh, also in, uh, when we're now talking about wine, it says wine was served in goblets of gold each one different from the other, and the royal wine were, was abundant in keeping with the king's liberty. And we had a picture on, on uh, such goblets of gold. We read uh, here in Esther that the royal wine was abundant. And this is a, a detail because the, the Herodotus, he wrote about the Persian. They Persians are very partial to wine. N no one may vomit or urinate in others' presence. This is prohibited among them. But it confirmed that the Bible said, he said the royal wine were abundant and he said they are very partial to wine. So this detail also confirmed by the Bible. One day when uh, Nehemiah served the king Artaxerxes wine, the king he asked uh, Nehemiah, why does your face look so sad? And then 
Nehemiah. He told the king about the sad situation in Jerusalem. And then he said, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city of Judah, where my fathers are buried, so that I can rebuild it. And the king said, yes, you can leave and go to uh, Jerusalem. And he went to Jerusalem. And the Israelites, they started to build up the walls. But again, this was not so well looked upon by the Persians. And it says in Nehemiah chapter 4, when Sambalat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews and in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, what are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore the war? And this son Balat, his, they found his name in the papyrus letter, elephantine papyrus it called. And it says, moreover, all these things in a letter we sent in our name to Deliah and Shalemiah, sons of son Balat, governor of Samaria. And this letter was, was found on the island fortress. Uh, within the Nile River in 1909. And it dated to the 5th century BCE. So what happened with the uh, walls in Jerusalem? Did uh, some ballot manage to hinder the building? The Bible answer, at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they offered great sacrifices, rejoicing because God had given them great joy. The women and children also rejoiced. The sound of rejoicing in Jerusalem could be heard far away. So they built the wall. And not so many years ago, they uh, found a part, a small part of what they called the Nehemiah wall. So it's confirmed that he, they built it up again. So now take a look at the persons we have uh, looked at from Persia. We have Cyrus, Darius, Xerxes, Artaxerxes, Tatanai, and some Balak. And this was the end of our journey. So let us sum up uh, what we have looked at. We have some persons from Babylon. It was Evel Merodach, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, Belsassar, Jehoiakim, and from Jerusalem, uh, Shafan, Jeremiah, Parshur, Gedaliah, Shalemiah, and Yehukal, and Persia. We had uh, from Persia, Cyrus, Xerxes, Artaxerxes, Tatnai, and Sambalat. The archaeologist discoveries have been done since the 19th century up to our days. So therefore we can say time is the Bible best friend. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, journey, our college uh, journey. And uh, I'm very glad that so many of you have taken your time to listen to it. And I hope we meet again, uh, maybe in the winter when we come with the part three. So thank you very much for listening.